reluctant to look at the the general history of what happens when people do this. Yeah. Yep, and I mean, that's why I, every chance I get, I like to talk about going back into the pages of history and reading about why we have these freedoms that we have today. Like, why were they in place from the beginning? And why are they so important? Why do they give us this opportunity? Why do they allow us to build this into the yeah. greatest country on the face of the earth? Um, and this marketplace of ideas and this debate and letting the best ideas rise to the surface. And now that's that's all going away. These rights are slowly being eroded over time. And uh, we have these crises where we then and take a little more. The government takes a little more power. Yeah. And you have career politicians in there now. So they're not, uh, what, I go, keep going back to Eisenhower, but he had a great quote about farming. And he said, hey, farming looks mighty easy when your plow is a pencil and you're a thousand miles from a cornfield. So you have people in Washington mm. who, oh, uh, you know, they're called to service as politicians. And they also happen to be very savvy investors, if you haven't noticed that. They're very savvy investors somehow. They make a lot of money in politics as politicians. Their family members make a lot of wise investments. They make a lot of wise investments. Very interesting. But they're career politicians. And that's not how this was set up. I had a great conversation with Bill Barr, former attorney general. He was on my, my podcast a couple of weeks ago, and it'll, it'll come out here in a little bit. But he, he's so in tune with that side of the house, with these career politicians, because he was in government, he was in private practice, got called back to service, did it, um, and 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 what he saw were careerists and people that aren't going to Washington just for a year or two and then going back to the farm. I mean, I think we'd be a lot better off if we had some more farmers rather than some attorneys who have maybe never even really practiced law uh, in Congress. Uh, and it's just career politicians, so it's a it's it's a business essentially. And this is that that term that people don't like because it's kind of like almost like fictional but the deep state they, they, people don't like that term They're, oh come on with this deep state talk yeah. because it was kind of connected to what trump was saying uh when when he got into office and that the deep state is you know after trump and people go oh shut the fuck up with all this but it seems like that's what the deep state is right is career politicians that are inexorably intertwined with business yeah. and they have as much look in today this is what my fear was during the election when I was talking about Biden. I was like, do you really think that that guy's in charge of anything or going to be in charge of anything without without any yeah. no judgment about who he is as a politician, but just as a, a, a biological entity that's he's not going to last. He's not competent. He's not aware of a lot of things. It's clear he's not good at forming sentences. <laughs> it's clear, right? It's clear yeah. he's not aware when he starts when he starts rattling off numbers. I clench oh. up. I go, oh Jesus, he's gonna fuck this up. The numbers is rough. It's horrible. Yeah. It's clearly he's compromised. So it's yeah. obvious that he's not the guy that's the puppet master. So who the fuck is? Who's yeah. controlling all the strings? And if this quantum computer stuff is real, and obviously it is, and is Google going to be the master of our domain? Who's going to be responsible for controlling the access to that? Who gets to decide what gets spied on, what gets controlled, what doesn't? And how do you turn this back? Yeah. It seems like you can't know. because it seems like technology always moves further and further forward at an exponentially increasing rate. Well, yeah, Jesus. and it's worse than that almost in that now they can control behaviors. Yes. And I don't think that was the goal right off the bat. You know, the goal right off the bat is to sell some advertising and uh, get people oh to take God, a, hey, ho, ho, look at that. Jamie threw me a perfect <laughs> pass and I bobbled it. <laughs> and yeah. So now you're controlling behaviors. And yeah. even worse than that, the next step is you're controlling thoughts based off what you're fed on these social media platforms that we're all tied to. And now we're, a lot of us are tied to them for business. Yes. And then they switch it up on you. And, uh, and now they're controlling your thoughts thoughts and that is scarier and than they're anything. censoring stuff for weird i mean i don't even understand why they censor some of the stuff they censor it's like it's almost like they're trying to get you accustomed to censorship like random censorship that is the craziest part of all of this is that our our stalwart defenders of the first amendment uh used to be lawyers used to be publishing houses used to be um, magazine editors used to be newspapers it used to be politicians they yeah. were in defense of that first amendment and all of us as citizens we would say growing up hey i will fight and die for your right to say something especially if i disagree with you because we're americans yes that used to be no matter what you thought of the second amendment or what you thought of anything else like that first amendment bound us all together and now we have those same people that used to defend the first amendment 
now actively calling for censorship. So instead yeah. of having that debate and having the best ideas rise to the top in this marketplace of ideas, now if I disagree with you, I just want to censor you and cancel you. How did we get so short-sighted? Like what what caused that in your in your eyes? I think we lost that appreciation for why we have that free why we have that first. Well, how did we lose it? Like what what comfort I think we got so comfortable. Really, society's fragile. And we had a glimpse of it at the beginning of COVID uh, where people were like, oh my gosh, is there going to be some food on the shelves of the grocery store? Hey, if I call 911, will someone show up? Uh, and then we got back to normal-ish as far as that stuff goes. Um, but that was a little, so we had a little bit of a scare. But even if you saw some of the uh, interviews on the streets of Odessa, of Kiev, you saw people not thinking that the Russians were going to invade. And they had these on yeah. the street. And then the next day, boom, society is fragile. For most of human history, society has been fragile. And you used to have to be good at the fighting and good at the hunting if you were going to survive. So we all have ancestors that were good at those two things or we would not be here today. Yeah. And society can collapse pretty dang quickly. And if you've been to Iraq and been to Afghanistan, you can see that. Uh, and you have a little glimpse here and there. But we have had so, from the end of World War II up to today, we've had relative peace in our country. It's been relatively stable in our country. We've got very comfortable and we've lost this sense of why we have these freedoms and instead we have this entitlement culture that plays into it um, and we have this just this 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 comfort that hey if I call 911 someone's going to show up. Well, guess what? Probably not. They're going to come up after most of the time. They'll be a few minutes late to save the day unless you're a politician with uh, taxpayer funded security surrounding you at all times. Um, but uh, but you have to be good at defending yourself, your family, your community, and you have to be good at putting meat on that table. Otherwise, your uh, your lineage is not going to be uh, going to be around that much longer. Isn't there also a thing that happens with people where the way things are now, we just assume they're going to stay this way? Yeah. And that it's too compl it's too complicated to think about all the possibilities for the average person the average person's plate is so full with job family yeah. business all the stuff that you're obligated to yeah. bills all the problems you have there's so much going on so many activities that for you to stop and say hey you know we have to really concentrate on the first amendment we have to concentrate on freedom of speech and the ability to communicate and express yourself and we have to be concerned with other countries that aren't concentrating on those things we have to be concerned with the fact that we could get invaded we have to be concerned that someone can kill our power grid we have to be concerned with all these different things and it's too much for people so they just choose to dismiss it 